Hi, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build an edge detector. And to do so, we're gonna take advantage of a phenomenon called propagation delay. And propagation delay is usually denoted T subscript P. And furthermore, I can subdivide these into TPHL and TPLH. So let me explain first what propagation delay is. So let's say I have a gate, um, just a simple inverter, like so. And I have a signal coming into the inverter and I'm gonna make this signal a clock signal, which is just a 50% duty cycle square wave. And I will call the input signal A and the output of the inverter will be B. And a propagation delay um, takes into account this phenomenon where um, the output at B takes some time to react to a change in the input at A. So I'm going to show you with a timing diagram what that looks like. I'm not going to make it to scale, but I'm going to show you the input signal. So A is just a simple 50% duty cycle square wave, aka clock, and it looks like this. And now I'm going to sketch B, which in the naive view, so I'm going to do this one in red because this is the naive view. This is not how it actually works, but naively, I would expect that the output at B would look like this. It would just be the inverse of A. But in fact, that's not actually what happens. In fact, it is slightly delayed. So if I shift the signal slightly, over to the right to indicate a time delay because of course the x-axis is time and the y-axis is voltage or the amplitude of my signal, then B will be slightly delayed in time. So it will, be, it will have the same shape as we would have assumed in the naive view, meaning it will be the inverse of A, but it will be slightly shifted in time. Um, and the amount of that shift is this in my sketch, and that is known as the propagation delay. So this is the propagation delay over here, but I am going to call this, I'm going to classify this in a more fine-grained manner, and I'm going to call it the propagation delay going from high to low. And when I say high to low, it's always with respect to the output. So the output here, this signal B, is going from, is going from high to low. Oops. Is going from high to low, like so. And therefore, the amount of time that the output takes to react to the input when it is going from high to low, that is called the TPHL, or the propagation delay going from high to low. And conversely, over here, so um, right over here, the time it takes, so the signal at A, the input signal, is um, going from high to low. And then some small time after, the output of the inverter reacts by going from low to high. And that amount of time is also a propagation delay, but it's called the propagation delay going from low to high because it is with respect to the output B. Okay, so that being said, let's use these principles to build an edge detector, okay? So let's go back and talk about edges. So what do I mean by edges? So I'm gonna look at my input signal, which is my clock signal. And I'm gonna say, I know that this going up, this is a rising edge, uh, sometimes known as a positive going edge or positive going transition, PGT. 
And over here, this is a falling edge, also known as a negative going transition. So I'm transitioning from high to low at the input. Um, and I'm going to use this principle, this phenomenon of propagation delay to build myself an edge detector. So how do I do that? So let's examine this circuit. So again, I'm going to have my clock signal. And it's going to be input to an AND gate like so. I'll call this signal A. And then I'm going to feed this same clock signal into an inverter. And that will be the other input into my AND gate. And I will call that signal B because I'm going to sketch out the timing diagram for it. And then I'll sketch the output of the AND gate C. And furthermore, I'm going to say that the inverter and the AND gate, all gates in this um, schematic have a propagation delay a small propagation delay. So I'm not going to draw this to scale rather, and I'm not going to worry about numbers. I just want to show you the phenomenon. So I'm going to draw my signal A like so. so. Let's draw my signal B in the naive view. And in the naive view, it's going to be just the inverse of A. And whenever there is a positive going transition at A, there will be a negative going transition at B and vice versa. So I know that that's not the case because now I'm aware of this phenomenon of propagation delay. And in fact, I know that this signal B is actually slightly shifted over. Okay, and I'm going to exaggerate this effect. And now let me draw C. So C is an AND gate. And I know from the properties of an AND gate, let's draw the truth table. So the properties of an AND gate are as follows. The output is only high when both inputs are high. So are there any cases now when I look at my timing diagram where both my inputs are high at the same time? And in fact, yes, there is. Where are they high at the same time? I can see that actually at the positive going edge of A, for a brief period of time given by the propagation delay of B, both input signals to my AND gate are in fact going to be high at the same time. So I'm going to draw out C. And again, I'm going to do this naively, assuming that there's no propagation delay. And I'm going to see that C is in fact going to be high for a very small and slightly exaggerated for your effect, for your benefit, small pulse over here. Um, but again, like I said, I know that this is a naive view. So in fact, I'm going to shift this over by amount equal to the propagation delay of C. And I will see that I can see from this that what this circuit does is it outputs a small pulse when um, A experiences a positive going transition. So on the rising edge of A, after, of course, a slight propagation delay, C will output a small pulse. And the width of this pulse is given by the propagation delay of B. We'll also say that C is slightly shifted. So the propagation delay of the AND gate really only affects the signal C in that it is slightly shifted from the input A. 
Um, it is uh, slightly delayed from the positive going edge of A until the output C um, emits a little pulse. Um, but otherwise, it doesn't affect the shape of the waveform. What is affecting the shape of this waveform at C is the fact that there is a propagation delay at the inverter, which causes the signal B to be slightly shifted from A. And that means that for a very short period of time, given by the propagation delay of the inverter, both A and B are high at the same time, which means that the output C will be high for that short amount of time. And so I call this circuit, I'm gonna give it a title, and I am gonna call it a positive edge detector. Why? Because if I draw a little box around this, I input a clock signal and I get this output C, which is given by this signal over here, then I can see that at the positive edge of A, C will emit a short pulse. And it's like it's detecting the positive edge of A and signaling it at the output. So now that we're armed with this information, let's build a negative edge detector. I'm gonna prove to you that this is a negative edge detector. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the circuit and then I want you to pause this video and draw the timing diagram yourself and make sure that you have this straight in your head and don't come back until you finish drawing the timing diagram, okay? So I'll tell you when, I'm gonna draw the circuit now. And I'm gonna remind you so this is a NOR gate, and I'm gonna remind you that the property of a NOR gate, it is that the output is high only when both inputs are low. So hopefully you've paused the video and you've gone ahead and tried to draw C on your own. And you've noticed that in fact, there is a very short period of time given by the propagation delay, specifically the propagation delay going from low to high of B, where A and B are both low at the same time. And this would not occur without propagation delay. So where is that? That occurs over here. negative edge of A, I can see that I am gonna emit a small pulse at C, right? Cause C is only ever gonna be high when both inputs are low. And thanks to propagation delay, in fact, that's gonna occur right over here. And just to be authentic, we are gonna move C over slightly, shift it over to indicate C that um, has a propagation delay of its own given by the NOR gate. So again, this little pulse at C is solely due to the propagation delay of this inverter. And thanks to that propagation delay, the signal, the clock signal A and the inverted signal B arrive at slightly different times to the input of the NOR gate. And for that small amount of time, again, given by the propagation delay here at B, for that very tiny amount of time, the output at C will be high because both inputs are low. So again, they are only low for this positive pulse here is the width of the propagation delay of the inverter.